yesterday when we were saying two coats would be enough. <laughs> and then we woke up this morning and we decided it really needed a third coat. Welcome back to part two of boat painting. Because of the paint we chose to use, we have enough coverage with just two coats. However, to try to get a smoother finish, we decided to dilute the paint and apply a final layer. The head on the bottom. Oh, now I can see it. So I get all my painting tips from John Barnard, who's not gonna want any credit for this job, and Ed. How many times have I watched Ed's video? Less than you've watched John Barnard. <laughs> I like how Ed says, just relax into it. That's true though, isn't it? It is true. I've relaxed into watching. <laughs> it's very captivating. Well, we watched that John Bernard video for 40 minutes last night. <laughs> yes. I would thoroughly recommend painting your own boat because even if it only lasts for, say, five to eight years, it's then in that time you can save up to get someone to do it professionally. What do you think, honey? Would you do it again? It's a lot of work. Yeah, it is, isn't it? I thoroughly recommend... Um, doing some fitness training before you start. <laughs> Just on your arms and your legs. You do a lot of squats. Yeah, so do start doing squats about three weeks before you're going to start painting. All right. Oh, conversely, if you really wanted to get fit, you could start painting your boat. <laughs> yeah, but you want to do a good job. You'd get crosser. crazy because it's so much fun putting the masking tape on in really straight lines. I started to look all over the boat to see whereabouts I could masking tape. <laughs> do, you want, do you want extra ones? Tips. Are you painting the next boat? I've watched enough video. <laughs> okay, so end of a very long day. I'm not sure how long to leave the tape on because John Barnard did not say. So. And then, Kath said. Should you do another coat? Look at the crispness of that line. Let's rip it off. No, it's gonna go slowly. It's gonna take ages. We'll put this in speed up. So this has been inside the oven and you can no longer make a sand castle out of it. So it's completely dry and it does some shaky shaking. And then I'm gonna put it in my stocking, which I happen to have in my drawer because I bought it um, to wear. <laughs> and then I'm gonna do the John Barnard method of putting it in there and shaking it over my gunnels. But at the moment, I don't want this um, to touch anything wet, so it is my scarf. I can't get to. Munchie really wants to get on that gunnel. 
wants to test it. I had a really good technique. Now you just panic, panic, gunning. <laughs> started off really well, you'll never believe it. How's that sound ahead of me? Oh, we started in. And with bottoms in the air once again, and under the sulking but watchful eye of Munchie, we completed the gunnel on one side of the boat. I know you love the gunnel, Munchie. Don't want to be alarmist, but I think I'm getting fatigued. <laughs> We're nearly there. After applying a few layers of sand and paint, we sealed it in with a diluted amount of hammerite and white spirits. I honestly think it's where hammerite comes into its own is gunnels. <laughs> now, before you flood the comment sections with Hammerite should only be thinned with a hammerite thinner. Let me say that I spoke to the company and did get white spirits as a recommendation. This is like when you pick PVA glue from your fingers. Action. Didn't want a trash can. Yeah, I know. It's a mistake I made yesterday. Oh, look at that. I'm so delicate with it, but as soon as we go through a lock, it's going to be bang, bang. Ta-da! I started the top for you. I don't want to do a cross. Uh. Wondering why we used masking tape on the gunnel? We wanted to create a smooth surface <gasps> for water to land on and to glide off. That's why there are sections on the gunnel that have no sand. We also took the sand to the edge of the gunnel. From experience, we know that's usually where your foot needs the grip. Someone on Instagram said 45 degree angle. Oh yeah, that's why I was doing it like that. Might be helpful for you to also see what kind of kit I've been carrying. In my left cargo pocket, I have a heap of these little bags that you that we use, tiny little bags that we use for kitty litter. And I use them for everything, any bits of paper, whatever. I can bag up straight away so paint doesn't go anywhere near the towpath. And also I use it for the end of the brushes. And in my other pocket, I have two spare gloves and I wear two gloves. So if I have to take off my gloves to do anything or check anything, I can put them straight away in the bin and then put the other gloves back on so you're not coming back in and out of the boat. Cause I find that's one of the most discouraging things is having to come back into the boat. I also have a bin outside, um, just a plastic bag attached to the stern so that I can just put the rubbish straight in there. And then when I'm going out, I make sure I have spare rollers, um, some white spirits, my paint, and a couple of spare brushes. Last day. I will say one thing. Um, we painted this side when we were up near Langochlin Basin and then three coats on this side. Then we turn the boat around down at Trevor Basin and I will say that the 
uh, Trevor Basin side is much better, I guess because you just get better. Um, so what I'm having to do is repaint under the gunnels. Because when I first did it, I thought that the roller would be good enough and I didn't tip off with the dry brush. And I did on the other side. And then when I've come back to do this side for the third coat, it hasn't, it holds the water more. So I know it's just a vanity thing, but the water pulls in the stipple effects from the roller, makes it harder to wipe off. So I kind of figure an hour's worth of work now saves me an hour every other morning when I try to clean below my gunnels, which to be fair, I don't do very often, but I'm just trying to do a good job. Thumbs up for what is hopefully the last pass at the gunnels. Turning the boat around to complete this side, we were exhausted. We knew we had a small window of weather that was just right for painting. In case you're interested, you can only paint in certain temperatures or else your paint doesn't cure. And in the case of some primers, they won't even activate. So always check the label and BBC weather. While Kath took to keeping us warm, I masked off the area for the coach lines. Want to know how I got them so straight? I didn't sand down the previous coach line marks and so they were still raised by about a millimetre and I could carefully follow that line. It still took an enormous amount of concentration as just going a millimetre higher or lower is very obvious when you paint bright white on darkish blue. I deputised Kath to be able to apply the masking tape for the gunnel runoffs. To be fair, I couldn't have painted the boat without her. She did all the little jobs and the big jobs that I found annoying. Yet, these jobs were essential to a good boat paint. She never complained when I was super picky and she was always encouraging about my progress and about the results. I don't want to get our hopes up, but I think this is the last job. Except for the stern. And then the stern another day, another week, because we would need three more days for the stern and we've been at our mooring for two weeks now, so we have to move on. But before we move on, I really wanted to get the gunnels done. Yeah, for safety. Okay. So how you do the gunnels is you tape off a water line. Yep. Then you run some paint along, sand it, paint it, seal it, done. But when she says sand it, not sanding it with sandpaper. Pour sand on it with your stocking full of sand. Yesterday I um, sanded the other side of the gunnels and I just did one patch. But then when we were trying to moor up yesterday when we turned around, I kind of um, noted where I stood. So today we're going to um, mask off two patches for the bow and do an extra one over the other side. the masking tape so sad? What masking tape? Oh. oh. <laughs> you can pull it off. <gasps> but it's your favourite. I know. You're my favourite. Oh. This means I'm carrying all the heavy bags from Tesco. <laughs> Ready? Yeah.
And just like that, the boat is finished, mostly. As much as we can do at the moment. If you found these videos helpful, could you like the video? Let's see if we can make this our most liked video ever. Thanks.